The power threat meaning framework helpfully talks about different kinds of power. And different kinds of power might be really helpful. So we can think about access to powerful resources and they might help us on our quests in life, our journey through life or the quest, the things we want to achieve. These different kinds of power are worth thinking about in the conversations we have with people. Equally, we can think about these seven different kinds of power in terms of are they getting in the way? Uh, are they in the way of us achieving things? So what are these different kinds of power? So on the, uh, the image of the quest, I've given seven different symbols to help as a little prompt, a reminder to bring these into our conversation when we think it's helpful. And we remember, we want to think about both sides of the coin here. We want to think about, is it helpful? What access to powerful resources have we got in, this, in these seven areas? And equally, are there powerful things that are getting in the way? Maybe powerful threats in this area and they might be getting in the way. And thinking about both sides of this can help. So the pound sign is a symbol just to remind us to think about economic power. We might have some access to money and resources through benefits or a job or savings, and that might help us. But equally, uh, lack of money might be economic power, might be getting in the way. So we can think about economic power in either of those two areas, it getting in the way or helping me. But then there's the house and the car stand for material power. So do I have a house and a home or am I homeless? Do I have access to transport through, um, uh, through public transport or do I have a car or a, a bike to get around? We can think about material power and that might help me that I've got a secure base and a safe place or it might be getting in the way because I don't have access to some material uh, power. Like do I have access to the internet? Do I have a, a laptop or a smartphone? Uh, if I do, that might be access to powerful resources, material power, and that helps me. Or if I don't, you'd put that in the things that are getting in the way, powerful things that are getting in the way of me achieving the things I want to in life. But there's also the, uh, the symbol of justice, those scales, and that symbol helps us to think about legal power. So legal power might help us. We might have a restraining order against somebody and that's helping us. Or legal power might be getting in the way. Uh, it might be that we have no access, no resource to public funds uh, because we failed in our asylum uh, seeking. And that's the legal situation is, is making it harder for us to survive. So legal power might help and legal power might hinder. And you might have different bits. The same person might have some helpful bits of legal power and some unhelpful bits. Depends on their perspective, their experience of life. But there are other kinds of power. So the two people at the top there, that symbolizes us to remember, to think about interpersonal power. So we might have friends and family. We might have staff in, in services that are helpful to us interpersonally. But equally, we might have relationships interpersonally with people who are unhelpful. And they might be getting in the way. People that don't want us to achieve the things we want in life. We might be in a domestic violence situation, for example. And that is it getting in the way of us surviving and thriving and getting on with our life. So we can think about interpersonal power getting in the way or a powerful resource, a relational resource that can help us. Friends, family, uh, groups maybe that we belong to. So the next thing is that actually, that symbol of the three people and their arrows, that stands for social power or groups that we might belong to. So it might really help us to belong to a peer support group, for example, like Narcotics Anonymous or Slimming World if we want to lose weight or a, a support group for people experiencing grief if we're struggling with that. So we might belong to a faith group. We might There's lots of groups that we might belong to and that could help us. But equally, Belonging to a group or being seen to belong to a group might be unhelpful and might get in the way, social power. So there we could think if we're, if we're without a home, for example, we might be seen as homeless, we might be seen as an addict, for example, and prejudiced sets of ideas, powerful sets of ideas or narratives about people who are homeless or people who are addicted to, to, to substances might make it harder for us to progress because we either believe these things ourselves or other people that we're coming into contact with give us less of a service or give us less credibility because they perceive that we belong to a certain group. And there's a lot to think about social power there. So belonging to a group, whether we identify ourselves with that group or whether other people see us in a group and the kind of powerful sets of ideas or ideology around that can really make a big difference, both to helping us on our journey in life, belonging to a group, or they might be getting in the way being perceived to be part of a social group, social power. Then we can think about that heart. That heart symbolizes 
biological power, embodied power. So that's all sorts of things like physical strength and skills. I might be good at a sport, for example, that helps me with my self-esteem. I might be physically able to get around and maybe look for work, for example. Um, but equally, I might have some physical embodied threats to me. I might have a physical illness, for example, and that's an embodied threat and a powerful threat to my well-being. I might be disabled, for example, and in a wheelchair, I might have had a, a leg amputated. And so there, I might things that get in the way might be some biological embodied uh, threats that make it hard for me to progress in life with the things I want to achieve. And equally, there might be some embodied biological things that are good uh, and help me. On that topic of heart, though, uh, the symbol, you could also think about environmental power as well. And that's worth thinking about, about the environment we, we're in. Do we have access to uh, relaxing uh, environmental situa uh, situations that we can get into, like uh, going to a park, walking on a beach, getting into nature? And we can think about all kinds of ways in which environmental power. So pollution might be a way that thing that gets in the way. I've got asthma and I live in a city. That could be some environmental power and threats to me but also equally environmental power and embodied power could be helpful. And finally, probably the hardest type of power to think about, symbolized by that light bulb with a question mark in the middle of it, is symbolizing ideological power or powerful sets of ideas. So there are all sorts of powerful ideas out there that we may or may not believe in. Uh, they might, and they might help us. We might access and believe some stuff that helps us. It might connect to our values and what we believe. But ideological power can also get in the way and hold us back. You know, if we're part, seen as part of a group that is given less credibility and less power in society, say if there's prejudice towards maybe, um, sometimes sadly there's prejudice towards people who are care leavers, who are without a home, who are addicted to substances, uh, people who are young, um, ideological power can come along and people are given less credibility or maybe someone has a mental health diagnosis of some kind of like personality disorder and as soon as that comes into the conversation ideological power and prejudice towards that group of people can come into play and they're given less of a service maybe or less credibility or they're, the other people around them services and staff and friends and family um, perceive them uh, as less able to progress and get better in life because they have a perhaps a, a diagnosis of a mental disorder is an example about how uh, ideological power might work in lots of different ways. So powerful sets of ideas, that's the thing, ideological power to think about, that seventh area. So hopefully the thing to remember about these different kinds of power is they're just a symbol to prompt us to think about access to powerful resources that might help us. And also some of those kinds of power might be getting in the way. And most of us have both kinds of power going on at the same time. There's powerful threats that we might have a response to. And there might be also uh, powerful resources, both material, economic and relational resources that we can tap into help us to uh, achieve the quests in life and to achieve the good life that we want to lead.